Hey folks, Dr. Lava here. Well, over the past couple months, we covered all the best cut content from Pokemon Generations 1, 2, and 3, and now it's time to move on to Generation 4. If you saw the previous episodes in this series, you'll remember that the early games suffered from some deep cuts due to a lack of storage space on a Game Boy cartridge. When the series upgraded to the Game Boy Advance, cartridge space wasn't so much of an issue anymore, however, a lot of that generation's content was region exclusive and never made available outside of Japan. But for the most part, neither storage space nor region exclusivity were much of a concern in the era of the Nintendo DS. For Pokemon fans, the real problem in Generation 4 was content that was actually programmed in, but for various reasons that we'll explain in this video, went unused in the final builds. Legendary Pokemon encounters, cancelled special event distributions, and lots more content was hidden inside every Gen 4 cartridge, but was walled off and made inaccessible by the game's developers. So in no particular order, let's have a look at the top 5 chunks of content that we never got a chance to play in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Between the three of them, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum had four special event key items that granted access to new areas in Pokemon. The secret key opens the door to Rotom's room in the Team Galactic Eterna building, which contains the five appliances needed to unlock all of Rotom's alternate forms. The member card allows you to visit New Moon Island in a nightmare, where you can catch a level 50 Darkrai. And Oak's letter opens up the Flower Paradise on Route 224, where you'll get the chance to add a level 30 Shaman to your collection. But there's one more key item hiding inside the game's internal data, the Azure Flute, which just like the other three key items, Game Freak had once intended to distribute its special events. Playing the Azure Flute at Spear Pillar causes a glass staircase to appear, leading to the Hall of Origin where you'll be able to catch a level 80 Arceus. Once it's been captured, trading a Hall of Origin Arceus to Heart Gold or Soul Silver can actually unlock new content in those games as well, the details of which we'll be talking about in depth in our Heart Gold Soul Silver episode. In a 2013 Nintendo World Report interview, the game's director, Junichi Masuda, finally revealed the reason why the Azure Flute was never distributed, specifically because he thought players would find it too confusing. Eventually, Game Freak directly distributed a level 100 Arceus via special events, but without the utilization of the Azure Flute or the Hall of Origin, meaning that unless they used cheats, fans never got a chance to see a level 80 Arceus, the Hall of Origin, the three music tracks associated with the event, or the unlockable content in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In Generation 4, several legendary Pokémon, including Darkrai's Lunar Duo counterpart Cresselia, are caught by first releasing them into the wild, then using the marking map on the Poketch to track them down. Well, the game's internal data also includes what's essentially a switch that can be flipped to set loose a roaming level 40 Darkrai, though there was never any in-game event to flip that switch and trigger his release. Unfortunately, that line of script for the roaming Darkrai ultimately went unused in the game's final builds. And as a result, Pokemon fans wanting a legitimate Dark Rai were left no other option but to rely on special events. More than a year before Diamond and Pearl's release in Japan, Junichi Masuda announced in the July 2005 issue of Koro Koro Magazine that Diamond and Pearl would fully utilize the DS's Wi-Fi capabilities to connect up to 16 players at once. Knowing what we know now, Masuda could only have been referring to multiplayer in the Sinnoh Underground, where players can dig up fossils, evolution stones, and the elemental plates required for Arceus to change between its 17 forms. When Generation 4 finally launched, local Wi-Fi supporting up to 8 made it possible for you and your friends to excavate and explore the Underground as a team, which made digging up valuable treasures much easier than just one player all on their own. There was also Capture the Flag, where you and your friends could lay traps for each other, capture flags from each other's secret bases, and run opponent's flags back to your own secret bases without getting caught in order to unlock new features for the underground, like the ability to add more decorations to your secret base and even an upgrade for your trainer card. It wasn't until 2009 that Masuda explained in an interview with IGN that the DS's memory limitations were the reason that we were tragically deprived of running around the underground with up to 15 of our friends. But who do we think we're kidding? Not one person watching this video would have been able to get that many friends together for a game of Pokemon. In fact, if you were like me, you bought two copies of the game and you traded Pokemon back and forth with yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum contain 36 unique forms of the legendary Pokémon Arceus, with 17 forms accessible during normal play, but 19 going unused and hiding inside the game's internal data. Arceus has one form for each of the 17 elemental types, depending on the element of the plate it's holding. But there's also an 18th form programmed into the games that's tied to the triple question mark type, a type that only existed from generations 2 to 4 and was most notably represented by the move Curse. However, there's no triple question mark plate for Arceus to hold, so unless you use a cheat device like a Game Shark, this 18th form is inaccessible. But there's actually a total of 36 Arceus forms, because all 18 have a corresponding shiny variant as well. But since Arceus was only directly distributed via special events, and thus never actually encountered, there's no chance of ever seeing a shiny Arceus by any legitimate means. Well, until 2015 that is, and even then you'd have to pre-order a Japanese theater ticket to the 18th Pokemon movie. But we're gonna wait to talk about that until we get to our Generation 6 episode. Okay, this next one isn't exactly unused content, it's more like external content, but it belongs on this list nonetheless. Two Gen 4 legendaries, Manaphy and Fion, were extremely rare. Worldwide, only 10 special events distributed them, and very few Pokémon fans got a chance to participate. So for most of us, there was only one viable option if we wanted to get our hands on these two legendaries legitimately. By playing Pokémon Ranger, a series spin-off on the Nintendo DS. Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum sold about 26 million copies worldwide, but Ranger only sold about one-tenth of that figure, so clearly, most fans skipped out. They just didn't think that Manaphy and Fion were worth it. But it just so happens that yours truly was among that select few who made the plunge back in 2006, just so that I could complete two more entries in my Pokédex. But odds are that you missed out, so I'll be brief and explain Pokémon Ranger and the legendary transfer mechanic in a nutshell. In Pokémon Ranger, you don't collect or battle Pokémon in the traditional sense, but you do catch up to seven at a time to help you progress through the game's Fior region. Like how Pikachu follows you around in Yellow version, either Plusle or Minion will tag along as your partner, and the rest of your Pokémon team will trail behind you as well. There are no trainer battles or random encounters. Instead, like in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you see Pokémon running around and you approach them to trigger an encounter. Catching Pokémon requires you to draw circles around them with your stylus, and the tougher ones will demand more circles and try to break out by running into and attacking your circles. And if your stylus takes too much damage, you'll black out and return to the last save point. But in Ranger, you're not necessarily trying to catch them all, you just need to find the Pokémon that are essential in reaching the end of each area. So for example, if there are trees in your way, maybe you'll look around for a fire Pokémon to burn them down to clear the way forward. And this is the game at its best, as it really makes you feel like you're playing a video game version of the anime when your Pokémon are actually attacking the environment itself, and your whole team of Pokémon walking around with you helps to create that illusion as well. And as you make your way through the Fiora region, you'll be upgrading your stylus circles, your maximum team size, and gain experience points every time you capture Pokémon, adding a further sense of achievement and progression. Once you've finally completed the game, you'll unlock a Manaphy egg that can be transferred over to Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum. And after it hatches, bringing Manaphy and a Ditto to the daycare center will produce a Fion egg. Ranger had a certain Pokémon Snap-like charm to it, and most review sites rated the game about 7 out of 10, and the sales figures were respectable as well. So Nintendo went on to make two more Pokémon Ranger games on the DS, with a Manaphy egg also being unlockable in both sequels. But unlike the original, they both required a download to unlock the egg, and as you might expect, those servers went down ages ago. And as a result, if you want Manaphy and Fion in your Gen 4 games today, there's only one way to make it happen conquering the entirety of the Fior region in the original Pokémon Ranger. Okay, before we wrap up, there's one more thing worth mentioning that didn't make the top 5. Generation 4's Poketch was a wristwatch version of Gen 3's Pokénav, comprised of 23 apps like the clock and the marking map that you could access on the bottom screen of the DS. There were two more apps programmed into the games that, just like the Azure Flute, were originally intended for distribution at special events, events that never ended up actually happening. These two unused apps are the Alarm Clock and the Stopwatch, and the internal data also contains a placeholder labeled App 26, so it seems the Poke Etch was once meant to have a few more utilities, but in the final build, 23 is what we ended up with. 
Okay, there are more Pokemon episodes coming up, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that, and check out our past videos for more Nintendo Cut content. If there are any corrections that need to be made, I'll put them in this video's description, along with all my sources. And before I go, I do want to mention that this channel now has a Twitter and a Patreon, so check those out if you want to help me continue making these kinds of videos, and there's some additional content for you there as well. So there are going to be links to both of those down below in this video's description. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.